Welcome to Build Your Best Business. I'm your host, Eric Holtzko. Build Your Best Business focuses on the entrepreneurial journey. What does it take to successfully start, manage, grow, and eventually exit a business, if that's what you're headed to do? I'm talking today with Sam Uden. I got it. Co-founder of Therapeutic Treats. Sam, so, so thanks for joining me. No, thank you for welcoming me and inviting me onto the show. Yeah. Um, I really appreciate it. So tell me a little bit about Therapeutic Treats. So we launched about a year ago. We manufacture organic CBD chocolates with fruit pairings. Um, and it's really done to help improve the overall health and wellness of anyone that's seeking alternative holistic healing approaches. Okay. All right. Yeah, I think when, because you and I know each other for a while. And when I first heard Therapeutic Treats, I, I thought of that maybe it was uh, a pet food. <laughs> <laughs> but it's not. It's for us. It's like dark chocolates and all kinds of things. So yeah, yeah white, dark milk, sugar-free. Yeah, my wife is. Uh, she always needs a piece of chocolate right after lunch. Oh, I, I might also. But yeah. So anyway, so t tell me how you got into this. So why did you decide that this was the thing that you wanted to do? Yeah, I mean, I mean, there's so many reasons. Um, just about a year and a half ago, CBD was still kind of new. Yep. And now it's becoming gaining a lot of popularity almost kind of like a fad yeah and yeah. It, it was projected to be a billion dollar industry and it still is oh wow and when we found out about it, it there wasn't as much exposure it was still kind of new to the market and only just like select states knew about it like california arizona detroit those type of places where they already have marijuana legalized um, yeah, and so for people who don't know the difference, what's what's the difference between CBD and all that? And like, THC. Yeah, I guess. Yeah. I mean, um, you can say it that way. I think that people may not even know that. Right. right. So I should actually start off by explaining what CBD is. Yeah. Yeah. So CBD is a natural compound. Um, excuse me. Sorry. The <laughs> no headphones worries. fell off. <laughs> um, it's a natural compound extracted from either the hemp or the marijuana plant. Okay. So it has two sources. Um, it's completely non-psychoactive. So there's no high associated with it at all. Right. And so it's if it comes from the marijuana plant, it will contain THC. Okay. And THC is the compound that gets you that psychological high. Okay. And if it comes from the hemp plant, there's virtually zero THC. So it's like very minuscule amounts to where it doesn't even show up on a drug test. Okay. All right. And so hemp derived CBD is what's legal across the U S and other countries as well. Right. Because it's non psychoactive um, and it's completely safe. Yeah. And it's interesting because we've put it into these categories where it's like, you know, you don't, uh, things get put into categories of bad or good, bad or not. Right. And mm -hmm. so like I'm sitting here drinking my big cup of coffee with caffeine in it, you know, and we're probably well we are as a as a society we're more addicted to caffeine than anything else you know like so so it's a, interesting to see it turn the corner and if you go and read any of the history behind why it was outlawed and you know hemp plants and hemp farms used to be a huge business it was uh, most of the what the uh, cords for ships were made out of hemp and things like that so so how did you get how did you understand or know that you wanted to get into this space like what other than the fact that it was going to be a big industry Oh, uh, well, actually, my partner, the co-founder, is the one that introduced the okay. idea of CBD to me. Okay. I didn't even know what it was. Okay. Um, and both of our fathers actually passed away from cancer. Oh, my goodness. Okay. Yeah. And he came up to me and he was like, hey, did you hear about CBD? It's something that cancer patients use to treat themselves, along with epilepsy patients, people that have seizures, Parkinson's disease, um, wide array of ailments. Um, and it's typically used for like anxiety, inflammation, depression, mood, very good for insomnia, uh, things of that nature. Yeah. And so when he told me that, it, it really fascinated me. Yeah. And so while our dads were alive, we didn't give them an opportunity to present this to them. But now we have a way to help someone else's dad. Right. And he is a chef and he deals with uh, bakery good items. And... I, growing up, had a really bad sweet tooth. <laughs> I consider myself a dessert connoisseur, a chocolate lover to the fullest. So it gave me a way to combine my passions. Right. And it gave me a way to help others. Yeah, yeah. Um, and we wanted to do, like, the fruit pairings to kind of give that extra benefit. Right, yeah. 
and to still keep it aligned with being organic, natural, um, we want to make sure that we source from very credible suppliers. Um, we try to keep the bar as clean as possible. Yeah, clean meaning? Clean meaning that there's no like artificial ingredients or preservatives, um, nothing confectionary. Yeah, so you're following two paths really. I mean, it's the CBD, but also this whole organic, you know, healthy. Correct. I know all the sources, I can read the ingredients. Yes. Those like kind of things. One of our packaging, our most popular flavor is the 100% dark chocolate, and it's literally two ingredients. Okay. Just hemp oil and cacao beans. Oh, wow. Yeah. Wow. And so getting into this, I mean, food, because I've interviewed now lots and lots of people, and, you know, it's it's one thing to build a tech startup. You know, you get some technology or you hire a developer, you build something, you put it on the app store, it works or it doesn't, or you put it up on a website. When you start to get into both physical product and specifically food products, there's a lot more to those businesses. Yeah, there definitely is, uh, as far as like licensing, compliance, uh, making sure you find the right space, making sure that you are able to scale up and make operations efficiently to mass produce. Um, because if it's something like, I don't know, like let's say meal prep. Right. Yeah. Somebody is it's one person cooking 100 meals in a day, <laughs> like that's tiresome that's right. gruesome as opposed to trying to do something that's streamlined mm-hmm. maybe having an equipment that chocolate machine that's just pumping out bars right and not having that manual labor associated with it right and so i think that is kind of um the real tough thing when you're dealing with food is how to make it streamlined and less manual labor now well you've got the you've got that but even you know royal is your business partner, yes? Yes. So he went to school to become a chef or not? Yes, yeah. yes. And he so went to uh, culinary art school. Okay, yep. Going to school that way, but then creating a product that you're going to put on a shelf that has a shelf life and knowing the life. How did you guys know what you needed to do in those areas? Um, I guess like checking the expiration dates, obviously. Yeah. You know, learning about what the shelf life of chocolate is. Yeah. Learning about what's going to happen to it if it freezes, if it gets stored in a refrigerator, and what happens when it thaws out, knowing what water damage it could possibly do. And so learning about all these different things that I would have never knew about chocolate and tempering and melting and just like if you add just the slightest bit of water into melted chocolate, when it hardens back up, there, it's going to create blemishes or discoloration or the texture might change. And at first we had no idea. We kept getting like bad batches of chocolate. We're like, what's going on? Right. And later reading about it, gaining more knowledge, it's like, oh, it happened because maybe a little bit of water fell in or um, improper temperature control or, yeah, you know, uh, just realizing like us transferring chocolate from one place to another during its solidifying process can ruin the chocolate. Yeah. So something you just need to let it sit wherever it is. Right. So so big difference though between deciding that you want to get into a business like this and actually creating the first product and getting it out to market. So how did you how did you do that? Like how did you know what you were going to create first? What how did you make the first like tell me that story. I mean, I you could sit and say it. And yeah. Lots of people talk about building things or creating yeah. a, a product like this, but they don't ever get to the action. To the, yeah, to yeah, the that action. point. Um, so the funny thing is we didn't even know we were going to be doing only chocolates. When we initially planned the business, um, we were thinking we were going to be doing like a CBD bakery Okay. where we have like uh, brownies, yeah. uh, granola bars, candy bars, cookies, a wide array of different treats. And we were just a team of two. Right. And then later on, we realized how stupid that was. There's no way <laughs> right. two people are going to be able to produce that many different items, that many different flavors of all these, like just imagine keeping track of all these ingredients and right. all these processes and everything like that. And that just was not feasible for two people. And we had to dumb it down and realize, yeah. let's just specialize on one thing and let's right. try to build a brand and a name from one item. Well, and that's that whole concept of focus and when I talk about what makes a, you know, a company successful. So you have to have, you have to focus as one of them. And people confuse that because it, it can be narrowing. So you guys have narrowed into chocolate, but you haven't, you did narrow in and say, we're making one dark chocolate bar, da, da, da. 
you know, you, you've got variations on the concept of chocolate, but at the same time, at least today, you're not doing baked goods. So entrepreneurs, they confuse that topic, right? Like what is what does focus mean? So it feels like you guys had to narrow, but you didn't narrow so much that you've limited yourself to only having one variety or one thing that you're selling. So is that, so did you just, was it just taste testing to get the product out there or how did you find the first customers or the flavors? Well, just in general, like I'm just curious of going out, you said, okay, we can't be a bakery. We're going to do chocolate. Right. And then you had to find customers and you had to formulate the product and so originally we decided to choose chocolates only or yeah. one of the reasons we even came up with this whole idea was because i don't know how many people have ever tried hemp oil or tried cbd oil but just to be blunt it's pretty nasty okay <laughs> um so we wanted to create an enjoyable consumption experience just imagine all the kids that have seizure problems or epilepsy problems you go to them and you try to give them a shot or something to you know that they have to ingest and they don't really want to right. because it's nasty or it's you know doesn't you know really make their sore buds uh kick in so we decided to create chocolates and imagine going up to a kid and be like hey take this bite of chocolate they're going to be more inclined to right. want to take chocolate right not knowing it's maybe medicine right yeah um i don't want to use that word but yeah i mean it's yeah i mean but right. it is that kind of thing because like one of the things that people talk about as an anti-inflammatory is turmeric mm -hmm. i cannot stand turmeric like the taste of turmeric is just not a thing for me. Like I don't, I mean, maybe I've put it in some meals and things, but the recommendation for turmeric is that you put it into like water mm -hmm. and, uh, and drink it. It's like in Southeast Asian cooking, that is a main ingredient in a lot of our dishes. Right. So we just naturally get turmeric in our flavorful yeah. like curries and stuff like that. Right. So, but for my palate, for some reason, like, cause I've read it, you know, like, oh, instead of take, cause that's one of the things you talk about with CBD too. Is anti taking off, yeah. Advils and Tylenols and whatever, which are terrible for lots of parts. For of your, your liver and yeah. Yeah. You should be using other things. And turmeric is one that I've seen a lady mm -hmm. that I've interviewed does an oil. She has an oil, olive oil shop and she talks about turmeric. And so I read a couple of those and same thing is like, I wish it were in a chocolate, <laughs> chocolate bar because I don't think I'm going to be drinking <laughs> turmeric right, yeah, yeah. directly. All right. Well, we're, we've talked a lot about background and kind of getting to the point. I want to bring a commercial break and when we get back, I want to talk a little bit about some of the challenges of like, how did you know how to find a commercial kitchen and what are you guys doing to scale the business? Because it can't just be the two of you forever, right? right. Just yeah. not forever. So anyway. It won't be. It won't be. So we're talking to Sam Uden. He is the co-founder of Therapeutic Treats. We'll be back in just a second. You're listening to Build Your Best Business. Tell us about Lightering Works. So Lightering Works is a company that helps other businesses in one of two ways. Okay. So your company is either growing and you're not exactly sure how to keep up. So you need to scale operations, maybe raise some money, those kind of things. So growing too fast. Growing too fast. Okay. Or, yeah, growing too fast. You got okay. kind of structural, you walk in every day, there's a fire. Uh, you've been doing it longer than three years or a thousand days and you still feel like you can't step away from the business and take a vacation. So we help companies on that side. So sort of operational support, looking at their financing, seeing if there's a way that we can help them you know, get to the next level. Or you're a company that's not doing any marketing at all. So you are maybe stalled. Your business has gotten to a certain level. You make a certain amount of money every year, but you've never gotten above that. And we come in and build marketing structure. So both of them are operational at the end of the day. It's about creating a process and a way to approach it that's strategic. Uh, it's that uh, owners don't often know how to do both of those. So they're really good at sales, which means they may need operational structure because they're out signing more customers than they know what to do with. Or they have built a beautiful product that's the best kept secret. And so they need somebody to come in and help them market that product. And so that's the kind of businesses we look for. We come in as a stopgap and we work with a company for somewhere around 12 to 18 months typically, uh, solve those problems for them and leave them better than we found them.
And we're back. You're listening to Build Your Best Business. We're talking today with Sam Uden. He is the co-founder of Therapeutic Treats, and I may or may not be getting his last name right. He hasn't corrected me yet. We'll just roll with we'll it. Just Sam roll with Uden. It. Sam Uden. <laughs> I think I said that. So anyway, so we're talking about the journey of uh, building a CBD chocolate company, like Willy Wonka, but with a CBD twist. Yeah. Right? <laughs> so as you started to, you know, you and I were talking during the break, and you said that you knew immediately that your customers weren't necessarily just going to be Georgia. So you had to have certain kinds of licenses and things. How did you, Why or how did you know that it wasn't just going to be Georgia customers? Well, I think it's because... Uh, the CBD trend has yet to really pick up in Georgia or people are not as aware or educated about the product here. Um, And a lot of our clients and focus comes from California. Okay. All right. Um, One of the reasons we were even be able to be here today is because we had a social media influencer who lives in California kind of put us on. Okay. She put us in the game. Put you in the game. Yeah. She put us in the game and we just started getting a lot of clients from California and we knew that's, would be where we would garnish a lot of interest from. Uh-huh. So from a marketing perspective, then social and some of those have been really important for you. Extremely important. Okay. Um, so we knew that we just knew Georgia wasn't going to be our only area that we can target or really even our main target. Yeah. We knew we had to ship out of state. And so there's there, you're a small company mm-hmm. and which means you can run a limited, you can do a limited run. Yes. A product mm-hmm. today. Yes. So what happens or what happened when you got that first day of lots of orders? Uh, well, I mean, we tried to produce every day or at least four times a week. Okay. So we have, can keep stock to, right. you know, when an order comes in, we can just send it to our fulfillment center and they can just go ahead and ship the bars. Okay. So you're in the kitchen a lot more. You're in the kitchen often. Yes. Okay. Sometimes it can. Yeah. <laughs> um, it does feel that way. Um, just like Groundhog Day. Yeah. <laughs> Oh, um, gotta bake the donuts. Do you even know that commercial? I've not seen that. Okay, you'll have to look that up. So, um, yeah, that's the, there was this one uh, uh, commercial for Dunkin' Donuts, and they had this one character guy, and he every morning got up and got to bake the donuts, got to bake the donuts. It was just over and over again. So, yeah. Okay. Yeah. Wow. Google it. Will do. <laughs> <laughs> so yeah, so so you, but I mean, has that been the case since the beginning? Like, I'm, what I'm curious about is you know, scaling, like you've got to scale the business. What are some of the things that have either helped you to scale it or have gotten in your way? So with the shared kitchen space, you only get a certain amount of hours in a month that you're able to work out of there. Okay. And that was not enough hours in a day for us to make all the bars that we need and let alone you don't give have enough space to bring in your own equipment to scale up. And so that is kind of the limbo that we're in right now right. that we're about to solve. Right. God willing. Right. Um, so uh, we're actually bringing in some new partners on board. Okay. And they have... Uh, 30 Dunkin' Donuts. Oh, uh, so they have see, large scale food right. production experience. Um, they have experience dealing with, you know, wa- large number of employee staffing um, and growing. And we just felt like their expertise could help us catapult to the next level. Um, they have a space in Marietta, Georgia that is empty and they, and he is actually a tenant of mine. It, uh, me and my family, we have a BP gas station, a okay. commercial real estate property, and they're attached to the BP. There's a Dunkin' Donuts. As all good BP should. Yeah. Right. <laughs> and so uh, he, he was my tenant, and we just had a meeting for a cross-promotion between BP and Dunkin'. And I just want to sh- just get some ideas just to, like, you know, network and say, hey, you know, I just started this chocolate company. What do you think about this? And I showed him my Instagram page, and... I was like, I'm just trying to, you know, learn more and how I can scale up. And he was so fascinated by the industry, you know, by the business that he was like, hey, you know, I kind of want to invest into this. Yeah. And he was just like, hey, we actually have an empty space in Marietta. I'll let you guys completely take it over. Instead of paying us rent, we would rather exchange for shares. Okay. And I thought it was a very interesting proposal. And I was like, you know, me and Royal, we don't have that large scale business experience. And we need to bring on somebody on board that can help, you know, help us make those executive decisions and know how to grow and what's the right way of going about doing this. Yeah, yeah. And so that's where we are now. And we are like very close to pretty much finalizing the deal and entering the space hopefully 
by the end of this month or next month. Um, so we're really excited. We're going to be financing uh, large chocolate equipment, have like a cooling tunnel and uh, where we can a just... cooling tunnel. That sounds like fun. Especially yeah. <laughs> in Atlanta when the uh, temperatures is hot Atlanta <laughs> and the humidity. Yeah. Um, so that is our next step is to get our own space, be able to work as much as we want, when we want, and then we're getting, you know, hire employees and things of that nature, um, and get into possibly creating additional product lines. Yeah, and so a lot of your customers, well, you don't have a retail space today, right? So everybody's receiving product being shipped to them. Correct, so we do wholesale. Okay. We have, I think, about 10 different retailers around the nation carrying our products. Oh, nice. And then we ship to all 50 states. Okay. So majority of our business is B2C. Yeah. But we are looking to, I mean, to really expand and grow as a business, you have to capture that B2B. Right. It's right. that B2B that's going to. And so when you say retailers, is it like retailers who have multiple locations or just retail outlets that have the product and they're carrying it? Like maybe a mom and pop or an independent? Uh, maj- Majority of them are mom and pop. Some are like one is this like a yoga meditation center. How oh, cool! Called Inscape in uh, New York. Okay. And they're featured on Vogue magazine. Nice. That's probably the coolest retail. I mean, now it's all my retailers are cool. All your retailers. All are cool. of my retailers are cool. Um, that's I guess the most unique one. Right. The others are like maybe CBD hemp shops. Uh, one on Venice Beach called Venice Circle, and they just carry CBD products. Um, majority of them are like like mom and pop health shops right like a vitamin store or like a nuts and berries uh places like that okay interesting mm-hmm. and and how did you find those stores they actually found us they found you yeah so you um, haven't had to proactively go out and track those people down yet no i i guess like our social media power uh just got so much attention where sometimes people just kind of come to us and find us yeah, yeah. So talk to me about the future then. You know, you're talking about this new space, like you're in the chocolate business. Do you want to be in the brownie business? Is there, like, what's next? What is, what's I, I next for I don't even know guys? if I'm allowed, you know, without my partner being here to disclose some secrets. Well, don't give away a trade secret, but you could say we want additional product lines. We, we want additional product lines, and we are working on something that we think can be Huge. Huge that we think can it'll be something new in the cbd market an item that hasn't been out so like cbd infused you who's <laughs> how did you read my mind <laughs> no but i actually wanted to do cbd chocolate coconut water oh but yeah. that that's i'm not next. not so much into coconut water but you who's like as a kid yeah that was i thing. mean if you don't love you who's what's i don't I mean, even seriously know. Right? what are your are your priorities yeah like though i can't imagine as a like a kid right yeah you know, hot day you can go into a convenience store and pick up a you who and drink it but i don't know i don't know i could do that in my age <laughs> you still can do it okay. you still can do it I, I know i will <laughs> <laughs> all right so thinking other products i mean are there other would there be a retail location maybe in your future so this is the thing the location in marietta we are uh going to open that up for retail okay yeah Yeah. so it'll be like uh you can come and pick up bars yeah shop online you can pick it up or buy and pick up at the store itself yeah well what's interesting about that and i've seen i watched marcus amone as the prophet and so he did a show recently where there was a company that had a very limited clothing line at this huge retail location and he limited it to just a place people could come in and you know say they bought from the original store or whatever Mm -hmm. and then turn the rest of it into office space right and if you go up to chattanooga there's the um there's the which i think they've moved into bigger space but there's a chattanooga whiskey and they have a very limited retail space, but it's in front of where the stills, you know, not the stills. I don't think they have stills anymore. Uh, <laughs> yeah, I think they do, <laughs> but not not for Chattanooga Whiskey. Uh, but go, going back where they create the product so you can do a tour and see it and things like that. So I could see something that would be really interesting. For- yeah, I, I'm sure there's going to be, uh, a, we already have some companies interested in coming to interview us and get a behind the scenes access and look at, our process and our factory so it should be pretty cool should be pretty exciting so, so how are you because you're you've said you know california is really more and maybe new york and whatever and cbd does have this still has a stigma with it yes so what is it what's is it just naturally being removed or you guys still have to kind of get around that um i think in our industry half the battle 
is education and spreading awareness. Okay. So constantly, like you'll see on our social media pages, us talking about the benefits of CBD or why it's safe or presenting research and studies that's backed up. Um, because like you said, there is still a stigmatism associated with it just because of its uh, cousin marijuana plant. Right. Um, and so letting people know that, hey, this is not going to get you high. This is totally safe. As a matter of fact, if you are high or drunk and you take CBD, it may potentially make you feel more sober. Mm, interesting. Yeah, because it helps with concentration and focus. Okay. Um, and, and the funny thing about it is the very, very first time I ever tried our CBD hemp oil, it kind of gave me this like lighting effect. Like, I, I hate to compare it to Adderall. Right. Like, when you take Adderall, you feel this, like, Clarity. I don't know, like, Superman-like right. effect. And so was, that's, like, the best way I could give us, like, a, a similar experience to it. Yeah. Like, the first time I took it. Yeah. Um, and But it was completely safe and natural. And doesn't, like, look, for anyone that's ever tried Adderall, like, you'll know sometimes you'll kind of, like, maybe have a little crash or something. But there's no crash or anything with this. Yeah, and there's a very interesting, and I don't, I can't remember it but we just watched recently maybe it's called drugs incorporated on mm -hmm. netflix that talks about okay. adderall and some of those and kind of the side effects and things and finding natural alternatives and as a society you know we start our mornings with coffee people do the the energy drinks mm -hmm. like the rock red rate. bull yeah I've, off the chart if i did something like that i can't have that much <laughs> in my system and then they end their night with wine or wine or whiskey right <laughs> but then we have cbd and others and we put those in these like bad categories right and it's just because there's just a it's a very interesting history if you go look at it why that was done that way so, right yeah. and, and i think the important thing is what helps is when you have social media influencers or celebrities or anyone that is in the spotlight that has a good reputation or image come and endorse this yeah, product exactly and it's like oh my god okay well she's taking it then it can't be so bad for me right so when you have somebody with credibility or a good reputation speak on your behalf i think it makes things Absolutely. a lot easier one well, is a third party who's done the research right and gone through and understands it from a different perspective because it's all of this gets uh it gets painted through a certain optic that may not be the right one mm -hmm. so well we uh wish you the greatest of luck very interesting story i love food companies so because honest I, so i've always thought like a restaurant or something would be something i would do but i like food so much that i don't want to do it necessarily <laughs> you just want to be a consumer i just want to be a consumer i decided i can't it because then it might ruin it for me right, right right so anyway so we've been talking today with sam uden 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 i did it wrong the last time sam uden he is co-founder of therapeutic treats you can find information about their product on my social media and probably on their more influential social media of how to order it and uh, learn more about cbd and how it can help you you've been listening to build your best business i'm your host eric holtzclaw what are you going to do until next time to build your best business.